What can we begin to do as parents if we have to have a conversation with our child about the unexpected death of someone close to them? Stay tuned. In this video, we're going to talk about my top six things for parents to be thinking about to help prepare their hearts and minds and to know what to say uh, to begin that conversation with their child. And for those who are new to the channel, I'm Dr. Larry Mittenall, a double board certified child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist. Here we talk about parenting in the digital age. Let's get into it. Number one, prepare yourself for conversations, not just a singular conversation. So any of the topics that require really deep level of you know sharing um, or are things that are uncomfortable for us to talk about, um, I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. For parents, we often have to have these conversations over and over again, right? Because they'll pop up in the life of our kids and we are often pitching the conversation to their developmental level. And so we can't always give all the details um, at any one pace. And so um, think, about, uh, think about that and having the language that you want to use and know that you'll be coming back to that, right? And your child will give you more opportunities. That hopefully should also give you a little bit of decrease in anxiety that you don't have to have it all right or all perfect um, at the first time that you have a conversation. Number two, make sure that you have a quiet moment to have uh, the big conversation. And so um, that there isn't the distraction of lots of, you know, noise or screens um, and that we're not distracted too as parents, maybe, you know, checking a text message or an email um, and, and can only give kind of part of our ourselves or our attention to our child. And why is that so important? Well, partially it's because not only do we want to listen to what they say, but we'll also be looking for the body language, the things that let us know, you know, how they are reacting to the information that we're sharing with them. So making sure that you have a quiet place is an important part of that. Number three, you may want to think about having the family all together and especially having um, your spouse there um, by your side for a number of reasons. So one, um, it allows the family to kind of get the same information rather than, you know, different variations of the story kind of being shared and, and needing to do some, you know, spin or helping kids to understand what might be misperceived. But the other is because we're having tough conversations too, I'm often better if my wife is sitting next to me and um, she may have a different way of saying the same thing or a different inflection or tone that can also be helpful. And sometimes when we're sitting in silence together, it helps to be kind of in a community um, of people that were doing it. So um, pick up a, a quiet time, but also make sure that you guys are together. The other point to this is if you have a child that you know is maybe too um, sensitive or it's going to be disruptive or make light of the really important subject matter that you're talking about, you may discern actually it's better. It's better that they not be um, a part of this time for us to, to talk. So use your parental judgment there. Number four, um, consider having a family activity where you guys get to connect and bond and do something, you know, fun uh, together, right? Um, after you share the news. So um, don't leave a child to, you know, think about the, the death of a peer or the, the death of a loved one um, and then just send them to bed. Often because, you know, in that alone time, our minds can do very silly things, um, especially in the in the minds and, and the lives and hearts of kids as well. And so um, sealing that time with, you know, a bond of affection where you guys are really engaged on something that is meaningful to you or just a lot of fun um, and a way of saying I love you. You can say that explicitly too so there's no caveat to, to doing that um, as well um, but I think having that in their bones and having our kids experience that are a good bookend to really big conversations. Number five, and you might have been thinking about this actually as number one, which is to think about the language that you're going to use to um, describe and to tell your child that someone has died. Um, and you're going to want to be clear. You're going to want to be developmentally appropriate with the language that you use. Um, and it's helpful if the family, within the family, that you guys are consistent um, in the words that you use in, uh, in describing uh, the event that has taken, taken place. The other caveat here is try to avoid using euphemisms like, you know, uh, passed away or gone to sleep, especially for young people that this can um, really be confusing and confuse um, death with sleep. And sometimes that can lead to issues um, related to, you know, anxieties or worries that can fill uh, that space. So trying to be clear, trying to be direct and also developmentally appropriate. And then number six, know that your child is going to have more questions going forward. And of course, this loops into number one, which is, you know, preparing for conversations, not just one conversation. But um, here's the other point to emphasize, which is um, there are going to be some questions that you might 
might not have the answer to, or maybe you haven't thought about how to formulate this or say it in the most beautiful way that you'd like to convey it to your child, right? And so they might have questions about heaven, or maybe they have some more detailed questions about the nature and manner of someone's death. Um, sometimes you have to guard against, you know, the, the level of information, right? So there's a level of detail that really aren't going to be helpful for children, especially at um, younger and younger levels. And so um, being able to discern that and saying, actually, you know, maybe we don't need to know all of that information, but what is it that you're most worried about, right? Asking that question often links to any of the inner maybe worries or concerns that they might be voicing. If that was helpful for you, let me know in the comments below. Uh, make sure that you like and share uh, with people who might find this information valuable. And to those who want a deeper dive in understanding how to begin having the conversation now that you know how to be in the right frame of mind and the overarching kind of skill sets that will be helpful in helping you to convey this information in a loving way, um, be sure that you check out my next uh, video on that specific topic. As always, my friends, take good care and be well.